when you have your routine as your solid foundation that you come back to each and every day, that is the thing that is going to create your mood. Stick with me, this is actually really interesting and I've recently become really, really, really passionate about the topic of routine. So let me get into it. I'm going to start with a couple of quotes for you and I heard these quotes through the Happy Hustlers podcast and they were quoting uh, Brianna Wiest from the Psychology of Daily Routine Journal. So she writes... The most successful people in history, the ones who many refer to as geniuses in their fields, masters of their crafts, had one thing in common, other than talent. Their most adhered to, rigid and specific routines. I'm going to read another quote, which goes like this. As your body self-regulates, routine becomes the pathway to flow. Flow is essential Essentially, what happens when we become so completely engaged in what we're doing, all ideas or worries dissolve, and we're just completely present in the task. The more you train your body to respond to different cues, you naturally fall into flow with a lot more ease, just out of habit. I started getting into this routine thing of my own accord a few months ago when some things in my life were just a bit crazy, and then coincidentally i came across this podcast which led me to looking into it and delving in even more deeply to tweaking my routine i'm just going to move this camera over here because the lights a bit funny okay that's a bit better this is jason jed's little box cubby don't mind uh, so I'm just going to talk to you about my experience with how I've introduced routine into my life and what a huge difference it's made. This is going to be relevant to you, especially relevant to you if you're like me, a mother. I'm a stay-at-home work-from-home mum. So what that means is that I have a thousand different hats on all the time in both business and as a wife and mother. But this can be used by absolutely anyone because we're all busy. So let me just start with how I started incorporating routine a few months ago without researching this at all and how it helped me. It was just to do with the very, very boring subject of housework. So where it started, I was reflecting that before we had children, I used to just do housework one day a week, smash it and then it'd be done. But I was finding that now with two children and different schedules, different sleep routines and just being busy with them and with my work that I was doing while they were napping or you know, in the evenings or mornings, I found that the housework just wasn't the housework thing just wasn't really happening. It was like a really big burden. Like you'd get to the weekend and go, oh, probably should clean a bathroom and I need to wash this, but oh, I need to wash that as well. Like it was just this big annoyingness in my life. So what I did, I simply made a schedule that looks like this, that hangs in my kitchen with the days of the week. It says chores and then nighttime. Below that is actually just something which says activities for the kids and below that is the type of meal that I would organise for particular days of week to line up with different things like how busy we, we are during that day and whether or not I needed leftovers for daycare and that type of thing. Um, so what I did was allocated different days of the week to different um, chores um, and what that did was meant that I didn't have to think about it anymore. I didn't have to wake up and go, oh, I should really do that. I just wake up and I know what I have to do that day. And I know that 
you know, in the evening, I sort out the clothes two nights a week so that they're ready to wash in the morning. And it just happens and everybody knows what's happening and it's just easy. It creates that flow. And I'll read you another quote actually. I'm not sure where it is in my little paper, but I do have it on my phone. It says, when we make decisions, it uses brain power. When we have a routine in place, we don't use as much brain power in decision making. We have more time to focus on the actual work. I find this is more effective when it comes to, you know, actual work work, not chores. But the effect is the same. I don't spend useless brain power wondering about chores. So housework aside, that routine is working fantastically for us. Fast forward a couple of months, I listened to this podcast and it was talking more about routine and about flow and, and how when you, just as I've just said, when you don't have to think about what task you're doing, it allows you to get more immersed in the work itself. So you're using your creative power on the actual work rather than on deciding what to do. Now, before I changed up my whole routine recently, the way that I worked is in my diary I would have a list of tasks that I'd need to do and I'd sit down in my very limited pocket windows of time that I have to do things like that and I'd inevitably just pick the simplest things off there so that I could cross a few things off it'd be like book an appointment for someone or check my email or pay this thing or buy this present for someone and I was never getting into the deep tasks that I need to do as someone who owns two small businesses that I desperately need to do marketing for um, to move my businesses forward. I just wasn't getting into those tasks. Add to that, I also have a couple of other big pieces of work, you know, that are not related to my businesses, but they're just, you know, all that life admin stuff that you have to do. Um, one of them is like sorting out photos and making photo books and another one was typing up all these notes from this course that I've done. So yes, I was finding that I was just getting nowhere fast by not having a routine in, in place. So what I did was I got a big whiteboard and I made a grid with the days of the week and the pockets of time that I have available to me. And that's going to look different for everybody. It might be an hour at five o'clock. It might be um, a morning nap, a lunch nap, some time in the evening, whatever. Everyone's is different. And mine is different from day to day. It differs depending on whether my three-year-old is in daycare or not. And it differs depending on whether my husband is working um, away from home or in the home and what have you. So what I did was just had a look at the pockets of time that I had available and then I got a packet of all assorted whiteboard market markers which dreamy and then wrote on my whiteboard all of the different tasks and allocated them and it has just made my life so much better by just knowing at this time what am I doing oh yes I'm focusing on this task and I'm finally getting somewhere and it means that when I'm doing each task, I don't feel guilty that I'm not doing all the other things. Previously, when I sat down, I had so much anxiety because I was like trying to get so many things done in such a short space of time, as well as just feeling guilty for never getting to the meatier pieces of work. Now, when I sit down to, to work, I feel relaxed and I can like guilt free, relax into the task and focus on it knowing that all the other jobs on my list are going to get their time as well. It's it's just been this game changing, just, um, I don't know, how do I describe it? I just feel like a certain weight has lifted off my shoulders. I feel like I'm making progress. I feel less anxious and stressed. I feel like in control. It's really great. Um, there have been definitely over the past month, past month or so that I've had this in place, there's been a few learning curves, which I want to share with you now. So the big one for me was seeing that I had too much on the board. 
I put all my stuff on the board and I was like, oh, well, when I add it up, I've really only got a couple of hours a week to like dedicate to making my website, which I really, really, really want to do. And the same for all of my other tasks. And I realized that I was just going to be making progress in every area, yes, but slow progress. So what I had to do was pull back and figure out where I needed to simplify my life. It was way too complicated. None of the things on my list were things that I could scrap, scrap off completely, but there were things that I could shelve till later. And that's what I've done. I've really pared it back. And at the bottom of my board, I've written the, the, the areas that I'm going to reintroduce once I've ticked off some other big areas. If you're like me, you might have one or two um, projects or areas of work in your life that um, have an end date. So once you've done them, you can tick them off and you don't have to do them again. Other things are ongoing, things like marketing for your business or whatever it may be. Um, obviously, they, they, they keep going. But what I decided to do was really focus on one big task and getting it done and off my list, which will further help me to have more space for the other things, but to, to have the satisfaction of actually finishing something. And I'm finding that I'm getting really, really absorbed in that task and it's very, very enjoyable and it's making me very, very happy to be making this progress. Something else that I learned pretty quickly within the first week of making this schedule as well is how to block the time off. So originally I had allocated things to happen at the same time every day. For example, in the morning, in, let's just talk hypothetically here. In a morning slot, I had work on website. In a midday slot, I had photo management. In an evening slot, I had work on course notes. What I was finding is that it was frustrating for my flow and creativity to be jumping in and out of the tasks. So for example, I'd be working on my new website, I'd be fully absorbed in writing the content and I was like on a roll and like really wanted to get back into it. But oh, I had to jump back out of that next slot to do some other task. And that was really dissatisfying to me. And so what I decided to do was to chunk the times, the, the tasks into days. So for, sort of like this day, I'm going to be working in all the time slots on the website, or it might be a day and a half. And so segment it that way. Um, so you really feel like you can delve deeper into it, fully focus. And it just means that when you get back to your computer or wherever your workspace is, you don't have to waste that time thinking, okay, where am I? I've got to pack up these documents. I've got to reset my brain into this space. You just pick up where you left off and it's that sense of flow. What I'm also finding is that by knowing I only have an, you know, a, a, fin a finite time to dedicate to that, th that particular activity, I'm more likely to do it because I think, well, this is, this is the time I have to do this. If I don't focus on it now, I'm not going to get to do it again till next Monday. So I had better focus. And that is really helping me to focus. And I'm, you do have to be really disciplined when it comes to this. I'm being really harsh with myself and saying, look, if you don't get that work done in that period of time, sorry, but you're going to have to wait till next week. A good example of that is... On Monday I've allocated a certain time slot to record a video and to edit a video if I don't get it done tonight sorry that's it you gotta pick it up next week so it's that discipline that you have to use and that really actually helps you to stay on track because without the routine what you do is fall into the trap of going whatever I'll just do it tomorrow and then tomorrow becomes the next day and you get sidetracked and you're like, oh, I'll just do some online shopping because, you know, my husband's birthday's coming up. So that can wait. No, tomorrow I have a good hour or so set aside for life admin. I've got to book some um, immunizations for my children. I have to, um, what do I have to do? 
I don't know, there's some things I have to do in the life admin section of my week. So I'm being very disciplined. They have to wait till then. I write them down and then I tend to them then. Um, so yeah, you do have to be very disciplined. But yeah, chunking the stuff I have found really helps. Um, I think I'm just I'm going back to my notes. Um, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so that's pretty much my top tips about that. Um, I just wanted to close with reading another little quote, but I really encourage you if you're into this or you feel like this could really work for you to go and have a look at this article. But it says this, your habits create your mood. Your habits create your mood and your mood is a filter through which you experience your life. So this is what it says. It would make sense to assume that our moods are created from thoughts or stresses in our life, things that crop up during the day and knock us off kilter. This isn't so. Um, I'm going to stop there because it gets wordy, but let me expand. This is saying that generally we assume that our moods every day are created by the things that crop up in our lives, whether, you know, good things pop up, stressy things pop up and they create, you know, whether we've had a good or a bad day. What this is saying or what this professor is saying is that no, it's our routine that creates our happiness because our routine creates our mood. So how does it do that? Well, what do you put into your routine? Your routine might be how much sleep you get. It might be how much movement and exercise you get. Your routine might be um, working some meditation or some journaling or some gratitude into your day or whatever makes you happy. Or your routine means that you are getting things done, giving you a sense of fulfillment and a sense of accomplishment, which is creating your mood. And your routine is the pathway by which those things are happening. So when you have your routine as your solid foundation that you come back to each and every day, that is the thing that is going to create your mood. What else? How else can routine create your mood? You might another good one my husband and i have um over the last few months introduced date night every saturday night we have a date night we take it in turns to host the date night um it's a night that we have off from cooking we usually just do something like um easy easy ready-made meal or a takeaway or whatever um i often will make a little cocktail or do a little dessert or we'll buy one we um, take it in terms to host and we do a little bit of entertainment whether it's like watching a movie or doing a little bit of like some kind of game I don't know but having this routine in our life creates give is the pathway for creating the happiness because we've worked it into our routine we know that we're going to have that coming up we know that each saturday it puts us in a good mood because we both look forward to the date night and we both look forward to feeling treated to being made feel special on this date night so your habits create your mood and your mood is a filter through which you experience your life I'm going to end it there. I really, really hope that you have enjoyed having this chat with me about routine and I hope that you feel inspired to rework some things in your life to have a routine because honestly, I just feel so much more balanced since making these changes. So thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it and please subscribe and stick around to see what's coming up.